Well, really, truly thank you to Dr. Miggs for his service as our president for the Medical Association and for your continued involvement as a Medical Association member. We are in our 174th year as an organization, and we have been through quite a lot as this pandemic has impacted our whole entire world. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Aruna Aurora, and I am excited and honored to serve this association as the next president, the 154th president. The Medical Association is the oldest medical organization in Alabama. Let me pause to give some context. Out of the, hundred, out of the past 153 presidents, 150 of them were men. I will only be the fourth female president. I will be the third minority. I will be the fourth Madison County president and the first Asian American president. I would like to share with you some of my background and some of my vision for this upcoming year. My parents, Nagendra Rao and Durga Tadakura, immigrated from India 46 years ago. They left their family, they left their stability. Sorry, my grandmother just died in the middle of COVID <laughs> in India. And as you know, nobody can get there. My father was looking for a residency in pediatrics and both my parents were looking for a better opportunity to raise their family. I guess that's the story of every immigrant's family. After moving around, we moved around quite a bit, lived in Boston, lived in New Jersey, lived in Tennessee, lived overseas, and then returned finally to Huntsville, Alabama. That's where my father started his pediatrics practice in 1986. A higher calling he continues to serve as he practices even today. This is where my brother Ashok and I grew up and I graduated as he did from Randolph School. These were our formative years where we learned from our parents the value of giving back to our communities. I ended up returning to Alabama and finishing college at Birmingham Southern College before receiving my public health degree as well as my medical degree from the University of Alabama at Birmingham. I continued on at UAB for my neurology residency, my chief residency, and neuromuscular fellowship before moving back to Huntsville to open our neurology practice with my husband. We have our own family in Huntsville now with both of our children, Asha and Abby, being born in Huntsville Hospital, and now they attend my childhood school, Randolph. So I am an Alabamian through and through, proud to be from this state and of this state. My story, it may be different from yours. You might be a third generation Alabama physician. You might be the first in your family to go to college. You might be a minority underrepresented in so many ways. We all have our unique stories. We all have our different backgrounds, yet we still share a similar philosophy on our dedication to service. Our differences are not limited to our personal stories. We have different practice styles in medicine. I practice as a neuromuscular specialist, and most of my interactions are in the outpatient setting, in a uh, single practice, single specialty private practice. I also work as a co-medical director as an ALS at our multidisciplinary ALS clinic. Each of our experiences gives us perspective on how we view healthcare. We have some physicians, they never set foot in the hospital. We have physicians who only do shift work in a hospital. We have physicians who do a lot of everything, and we have super specialists who spend most of their day doing one particular thing. We have so many different viewpoints. We have so many perspectives. Our backgrounds, they may be different. Our work environments also different. But my experience working with so many of you is that we are more similar than we are different. And it is by recognizing and encouraging these unique and diverse experiences that we can fully unlock our potential as a medical association towards a shared vision and mission. So what is that mission? The association exists to serve, lead, and unite physicians in promoting the highest quality care for the people of our state, our Alabamians, through advocacy, information, and education. 
who we are as an organization is not only defined by our mission statement, but on how much time and energy we actually spend implementing our mission. The pandemic has certainly unveiled some of our longer standing health disparities in our state. Certain populations got hit harder than others with African-American patients, rural patients having much higher morbidity and mortality than any other parts of our state. We have continued issues with maternal mortality, infant mortality, mental health, access to care, and certainly systemic racism. We should continue to provide our excellent care of the sick while balancing this with a renewed focus on social determinants of health. We continue to advocate for our patients while we battle infringing scope of practice issues. These are just some of the issues that we confront as the Medical Association. As the Medical Association, we have a role to play in shaping these decisions. By shaping these decisions, we have the best chance of affecting outcome and potentially helping narrow these healthcare disparities. As leaders, we must advocate not only for ourselves, but for those who cannot advocate for themselves, the patients that sometimes fall through the cracks. We sometimes forget that these are our patients too. It is our responsibility to see them. By seeing them, we make them visible. It is only then that we can help them. It is hard to help those that we cannot see. And it is hard to help those that we cannot understand because of our own implicit biases and our inaccurate cultural competencies. Who we are as an organization has changed over the last several years. As the practice of medicine has changed over the last decade, so must this organization. We must stay current, we must stay relevant, and we must stay united. Please feel free to reach out to me or to any of us in leadership. We are eager for your ideas, your thoughts, your willing participation, your suggestions. We are here to serve you and all our patients in this great state. I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Aurora. We would now like to honor the past presidents